about five years ago, I was a teaching head and I was teaching at Norbury Primary School. So I completely remember all the DT lessons that I used to teach, where I used to be able to just get the equipment out on a whatever afternoon it was, spend a little bit of time doing design technology, then put all the equipment away. And I always felt that design technology was such an important um, subject and often overlooked. So when we had the opportunity to really develop our design technology curriculum and facilities at Stuyper Stones, I grabbed it with both hands. So if I share my screen and just check that the sound is going to work. It is. And bear with me a second. Start from the beginning. Okay, so welcome to Stuyper Stones Primary School. Um, Stuyper Stones is a tiny, tiny primary school. On roll, we have 30 children. That is our entire school from year one to year six. And um, going back a couple of years, as I say, I was, I was at Norbury Primary School. I was asked to start to work in with Stuyper Stones Primary School because it didn't have a head at the time. And it became clear that actually we weren't, be able to, we weren't going to be able to keep Stoper Stones as it was as a school with just 30 pupils. So what we actually did was use what was quite a difficult situation and tried to turn it into a positive. So we, as you can see, it's a really rural location. There are not very many children around. So in Stoper Stones, we've got 30 children. Um, we decided we would work with two other schools and we worked really closely with Norbury Primary School and Cherbury Primary School, which are all really close. And we became Shropshire Hills Federation. And between the three schools now, we have about 200 children from two years old to 11 year old. Um, we are, we've got lots of challenges and having a rural location is a real big challenge because actually local facilities for children and teenagers, young adults are not great. So what we wanted to do with our opportunity is to create something that was fantastic for all ages. So what we decided to do with the Stoper Stones building was, Stoper Stones School still exists as a school in its own right. But we actually transport all of the children down to Norbury Primary School for most of their lessons. And we have converted what was quite a dilapidated building at Stuyper Stones into a purpose built um, unit for design technology and arts and also outdoor and adventurous activities. So what we wanted to do, we wanted to put all the things that were really important to us up at Stuyper Stones and design technology is so important for us. And obviously you're all design technology coordinators. I'm the design technology coordinator for our federation. And we all know that actually the children get far more than design technology out of it. And it gives them the opportunity. Yet yeah, they love to design things, make things, build things. But all of those are the transferable skills that they're gaining, um, communication and application of literacy skills, mathematics skills. All of those other things are really important as well. And we wanted to use design technology to develop those. We also wanted to make sure that we could develop children's um, appreciation of food, where it comes from, how to grow it, how to cook it from scratch and develop a healthy lifestyle um, and also develop their understanding of safety and taking responsibility for themselves. And from a very young age, we give our children a lot of responsibility. And I would say that almost without exception, they take that responsibility and thrive on it. I've just had a lovely afternoon today with year ones and we've been junk modeling and a little bit more than junk modeling. 
and they have been absolutely fantastic working with tools. So we've got five year old children working with a range of tools and they have been absolutely brilliant. So the good thing for me is I actually get to work with all of the children, all of the age, all of the age groups, all of the children and I actually teach them um, for part of their lessons every week, which is really good for me. Oops. One of the things we did before we even looked at the department and what we wanted to do with it, we took a real deep look at our curriculum and um, our main curriculum is topic based and what was happening. Sometimes design technology fits in really well to it and sometimes it didn't and we were forcing it in and sometimes we weren't quite sure whether we're teaching design technology or whether it was art or whether it was craft or whether it was other things. And what we found is actually, although our children were doing lots and lots of different projects and really enjoying them, um, some of their skills were not developed sequentially. So sometimes children were designing things and then they didn't have the skills to build them. We hadn't really taught the skills in a way that we really wanted to, to enable them to really excel. So last year we reviewed it and, and put together a curriculum um, which we think builds on children's skills from reception upwards and hopefully by the time they leave in year six they will have a really wide range of skills that they can apply to all sorts of different projects and topic areas and also we wanted to apply that to cooking as well and make sure that by the time our children left in year six they were able to bake and cook a range of products, meals completely from scratch and be able to be self-reliant. So that, that is our aim when the children leave at the end of year six. We, we've always taught cooking um, a, a lot in our schools. And we've, we've, for instance, at one of our schools, our children run, um, run a cafe as a business, which they run once a month. And again, it gave them the opportunity to um, work with the public prepare food, serve foods, and it had lots and lots of benefits. And that's something that now that COVID is hopefully um, starting to be a little bit behind us, we'll go back to again. So having a look at our facilities, as I say, I know how lucky we are. We are incredibly lucky with what we've been able to build. And, but we've gone from a position of having very little to just change in the way that we think and the way that we work. So we have completely refurbished the building and we've asked for lots of help to do it. And we haven't been afraid to go out and ask for help. And we've gone to business and we've gone to uh, um, PTAs, we've gone to local councils. Um, Stiper Stones is a Church of England school. So we work with Hereford Diocese as well. And we've had to have um, lots of discussions with them about changing the use. So we've had to be really proactive at going out and looking to get people to help us to do what we wanted to do. And everyone has been really positive and really cooperative and supportive. So we, we needed a classroom area. So we put together a multi-purpose classroom area, but it's something brilliant that we can actually leave things set up. So you can say, see at the, the back there, we've got one of our green goblin cars, which we build, which I'll come on to later. But it's something that doesn't have to be tucked away into a cupboard at the end of the day. We can leave it set up so we don't waste time. We can also leave art projects set up so that they can, children can run for, with them from week to week and we don't have to tidy them away. And we, we approached um, a local, well, localish technology firm called NIDEC, NIDEC Control Techniques. And we explained to them what we were doing and asked them for them for some support. And they supported us to put this classroom area together and furnish it and make sure that we got all the facilities that we needed. And NIDEC are a huge multinational company, but they've got a, a, a branch in Newtown. And when we approached them, they were only too happy to help. And we're hoping as we go into um, different types of technologies that they'll actually come back and share their expertise with us as well in engineering and electronic engineering. One of the things that we really wanted was a kitchen area. And this particular room was basically a derelict kitchen. So we stripped it all out 
and we went to PTAs and asked for funding and um, PTAs from all three schools chipped in um, to, to put some of the funding together. We put some funding from school budgets, which were obviously we all know are quite tight, but we, we found money to be able to put together the kitchen that we wanted and we worked with a local company and they designed it for us and they designed it so that everything was at different heights so that we got all the facilities that we needed and that children could access them and lots of storage space worktop space and we've got the kitchen area now that we can comfortably teach 15 children in at once so we can have a reasonable sized group who can all be able to cook it's not a question that we have to now you know wait for children to take it in turns we are very very lucky and you know we can have a good group of children in there all learning to cook oops sorry and they cook some fantastic meals um, I think this was one of our year three and four groups last week, producing pasta bake. It's lovely. They always cook me my lunch as well, which is fantastic. So as well as the kitchen, we, we wanted um, a design technology workshop and we wanted all the resources in there, the facilities in there that we would need to teach the primary school curriculum properly and then some, because we we felt that we could really enhance our children's education through design technology not just in design technology so we wanted something where they could really apply their maths literacy literacy skills team building skills um, and the way that they they actually work together so this is our workshop and again we had some of these benches designed at different heights some are designed for left-handed children, some are designed for right-handed children. What we do need, we've got about 200 children with lots of space. We need lots of storage space for children's projects. So again, we have to be tidying everything away all the time. And just in the background there, which I haven't shown in detail, we've got a little clean room area. So we, we often make lots of dust and mess in this particular area. But in the, the separate room there, we have a little clean room area, which we use for electronics at the moment. And it's it's something that we are going to be developing in the future for um, for CAD and for um, cutting, design, cutting, electronic cutting, laser cutting, 3D printing, that type of thing. So having then put the facilities in place, we really started to talk to our staff and talk to our staff about their confidence levels and what they uh, what they needed to be able to teach what we aspired for for our children to learn. And we found that actually lots of our staff um, they felt that they have to teach 11, 12, 13 different subjects, and they'd never been given the training that they really needed for design technology. Um, you know, most of our teachers, particularly our teachers who'd um, tr uh, trained recently, our newly qualified teachers and, and recently qualified teachers, maybe had one or two seminars um, about design technology and never really had the opportunity for hands-on training. So lots of our staff didn't feel confident that they could do what we actually wanted them to do. So what we really needed to do was work on work with our staff first of all and we've done that and we we've, we've tried to invest not just in resources but in our people because it doesn't matter what facilities we have if we don't have teachers that are all on board and we don't have teachers that have got the the skills and the the knowledge to be able to deliver it, it it's not going to make any difference how fantastic the facilities are so we we've done a wide range of things with our staff and we've done lots of staff meetings so that we could develop um, a, a good policy schemes of work projects we've looked at how we're going to produce different projects we've done specific pd days and we worked with Leanne me and um, uh, kevin harrison and they gave us lots of advice and kevin came in 
and worked to deliver a PD day for all of our staff recently. But we've also done peer mentoring. So what we did find is that different members of staff have got different skills. So the skills that I had in sort of woodwork and construction and things like that, um, I could share. But then also we had staff members who'd got previous experience in the catering, in catering industry or in uh, textiles industry. So we've used the skills that we've got from um, adults sort of past careers as well um, to, to share amongst other members of staff and develop staff that way. And that's worked really, really well. So this was, this was a group of our adults. So mostly teaching staff here with some TAs. And they, what they did on this PD day was actually what the children would be doing in some of their projects. projects. So they had first-hand experience of actually building the things that the children were going to build. So they could actually learn the skills that they needed. And they could also experience the, the difficulties that the children would face and, and some of those develop some of those problem solving skills that we really want the children to develop. And that's the great thing about design technology. Yes, they're building something, but actually the problem solving skills and overcoming problems that children get from it is, you know, it's even more beneficial than the DT itself. So we had a number of staff members who I say who were not confident at the beginning of this process, but their confidence has grown and grown. And as they spend time teaching their children and working perhaps alongside me and alongside other um, members of staff who've got some experience, their confidence has just grown and grown and a subject which they were sometimes quite nervous about teaching or not sort of particularly keen on is now a firm favourite. I think on our PD day, it's actually a really enjoyable day. So what we then started to do was to model in the classroom. So teachers such as the teacher that we've got here, Sally Ann Jones, one of our year three, four teachers, previous experience in catering. So she developed our cooking curriculum and set all the recipes up, et cetera, and helped us to organize the kitchen. So we got everything that we needed. And then she's modeled other members of staff, the skills that they would need to teach their children. So she, she's led some teaching sessions, being observed by other members of staff. And um, you can see all the children are really engaged. And, and what I would say is that every single group of children that we take to do cooking are 100% engaged all the time. We don't have any problems with behavior ever. Um, the same in design technology. And it's because they're doing things, they're actually making things, they really enjoy making things. They don't get bored, which is fantastic. So following on from that, other members of staff who worked alongside can then take on the lead and start to lead their classes and develop their groups. And that works really, really well. Exactly the same with me. My, my strengths lay in designing and making small products with the children in the main workshop. So I've been lucky enough to work with all of the children from all three schools and work alongside their class teachers and then be able to hand lead, the leading of the classes, the leading of the sessions back to their teachers, which has worked really, really well. That's one of our teaching assistants, Kirsty, working with one of our year one children. And we make sure that all of our children, no matter how young they are, they're all learning to use tools. They're all learning to, um, to, to design and build. And they're taking responsibility for using what potentially could be dangerous tools, but it's done in a safe way, just that the level of supervision is different. There's a little short video clip here 
of uh, this is our assistant head, one of our assistant heads, Kath Lewis, and she's now taking on leading the class. So she works alongside me for sessions and then leads other groups after that. Okay, if it slips, I'm going to cut my thumb. Okay, so we need to keep that thumb out of my way. Okay, now, what if I cut like that? It's going to cut it with wood side. So I need to keep my saw nice and straight. Okay? And we're going to, which way did, am I going first? Back. Backwards. Back. And we're going to go forwards. Now, as you're cutting, can you hear it's quite neat? You can see from that video there, you know, um, Kat's really confidently teaching her children, which is exactly what we want. So it's it's really it's actually really early in our development. We've been doing this for about a year now, and but we're also we're already seeing huge progress. So in pupils' confidence in their skills, actually in their enjoyment, their engagement, and lots of people do ask me. How do we manage to dedicate so much time? So what we do, we transport our children a class at a time from all three of our schools to the Stuyperstern site. And we have an entire day of design technology each week for a whole term, which, as I say, people ask me, how do we manage to dedicate so much time? And the only way that we can dedicate so much time is to make sure that we plan our curriculum really carefully and we plan in there the application of maths, we plan the application of literacy skills and we make sure that children are using these independently in every lesson. Um, we, we plan other things into our design technology so we do make it quite cross-curricular where appropriate and we get children to be using their sort of trying new, new foods and they're developing their cooking skills. It's actually all part of our PSHE lessons as well. So it's about really being quite cross-curricular and creative with time. But what we are finding already is actually the benefits are in maths, our children are far more, far more confident with measure. They're far more confident with, um, they're far more confident with capacity things, all those skills that we're using in our design technology lesson. They're actually then it's reflecting in their other in their other lessons back in their in their own classrooms. And I think communication as well. We want our children to communicate with each other. If they're working in pairs or working in small groups here, that's something that they have to do. And you can hear from the conversation that the boys have here just how, how powerful it is. And also their focus, the children's focus is really, really good. And, and actually what's lovely is to see children just enjoying as well. And, it, and just in the next um, short clips, you can still see children really taking responsibility, not just for um, doing the cooking and all the fun things, but the cleaning up as well. And that's a really big part of it. We make sure that children are taking full responsibility for absolutely everything. And I think, you'll, you know, if you look at some of the pictures of the children's faces here, you can see just how much they're enjoying it as well. Always lots of smiles, which is fantastic. 
So we, we, we do a wide range of things with them and um, we really focus on making sure that they've got the skills that they need to be able to, to, to transfer to all sorts of different projects. So everything from marking, measuring, measuring, marking, cutting, um, sheet materials, woods, plastics, all sorts of different things, but things that are transferable, things that they're going to need in life in the future as well. So, as I said, we work with our children um, from reception up to year six, and we developed a curriculum which really does start with basically junk modelling. And what we want our children to do, we want them to do more junk modelling. We want them to be creative and just to use their imagination, but actually develop some skills as well that they're going to need. And the children absolutely love this and get so much from it. And then start to develop other skills, but skills again that they can use across a wide range of projects. So with our year twos, threes, fours, we look at very, very basic constructions. And you can see that one's slight, slightly wonkily, but actually it doesn't matter because the, the whole point is that the children do it, we don't do it for them. We give them the skills, they do it, and they learn from making mistakes and they improve and they, they see what happens when they make mistakes, they come across problems and they resolve the problems for themselves. One of the things I said at the beginning was actually we're looking back to a couple of years ago, we weren't sure whether our design technology curriculum was art or craft or what it was. Um, we, we looked at our topics and actually we still do topic based learning with them. So we were our year threes, fours, we're doing Anglo-Saxons last term. And so we wanted to build an Anglo-Saxon village. It gives us obviously again more time, it's cross curricular. But rather than making it a craft project, we still focused on the skills that we were learning this term and we were learning this term about marking, uh, measuring, marking, cutting, joining materials. So they used all the skills that they've learned within their project. And then the similar skills can then be transferred as they go through the year groups. Our year sixes this year are building a remote control car. So and they've got to make it go forwards and backwards. They've got to wire it. So they're going to use some of their science skills in there. Again, it's cross curricular, lots and lots of problem solving. But also learning some new skills as well. And as the children go a little bit higher up the school, they start to use um, different methods of joining. So we've got our year fives here, learning to solder, and that worked really, really well. And again, completely different skills, not easy when you're perhaps nine or 10 years old to do this, but a really important skill. And also, having the opportunity and time. The, the good thing about having the whole day of design technology, we've got time. So the children need to test, they need to look at and improve, see what's working, see what's not working. So they get the opportunity to test before they move on. And that's a big part of it for us. And it's also fun. <laughs> So, so one of those cars needed a bit of a kickstart. It, it sort of got there in the end, but by having that time, um, that little girl's able to resolve those problems and, and eventually build a car that works the way she wants it to. One of the things we've done for quite a few years in our separate schools is um, working with Green Power to build the Goblin Green Goblin cars. And we are currently building two Green Goblin cars 
and uh, what happens is the children spend a couple of terms building the cars then they take them off to various places around the country and race them against other children which all the children all the year sixes are really looking forward to doing this year and again it's a different set of skills so very much engineering based and what we do this is something that the children do with me but we also work with um, STEAM ambassadors and we bring people in from outside, some more experience. And they're often retired um, ladies and gentlemen who've worked in um, technology industries and they bring a completely different perspective for our children. And it's brilliant for our children to work with different adults, often different, you know, some, as I say, retired. Um, people with a wealth of experience that they can share with our children. You guys work well together. Yeah. You often do things together? Yeah. Teamwork, very important for any construction job. Oh, okay. And it's really important for us to make sure that we, we are breaking down any gender stereotypes that, that are present and they are still present in our communities and, and some of our, our girls when they first come in they're not sure whether they're going to be good engineers and they actually turn out to be brilliant engineers just as good as the boys uh, often better because they're much better at listening um, and it gives them a, a new perspective on what they can achieve you know they can go into they can go into all sorts of different industries in the future and all of our children boys and girls love this project it also gives children the opportunity who maybe are not the most academic and it gives them the opportunity to thrive in a different environment it's up this is new to all of the children and what's fantastic to see is that often the children that really shine may not be the best at maths they might not be the best at english um, but they're showing different skills it's given them the opportunity to show different skills so that's where we are at the moment and really we're starting to look at what's next so we've got some very easy what's next so we've decided actually having used cordless hand drills it's quite difficult to do some of the projects that we're doing with cordless hand drills um, so we'll be installing some bench drills and we need to develop our range of hand tools and um, we're also now going to start looking at, at pad and both the drawing and for cutting and also to use in our um, projects that we're going to use with textiles um, in, introducing electronic and computer control um, more textiles we need we know we need to put more textiles into our curriculum and really to start to develop links with high-tech industries and we think that actually if we approach people they'll be only too um, too willing to come and help us so we're looking at celebrating our achievements so far and, and also sharing with other local schools because we know as all small schools that actually to have the facilities that we've now got is a massive luxury so what we want to do is to make sure that other small schools can actually come along and share their facilities that we've created as well and um, if if anybody wants to have a look at our curriculum and what we've done it's very much a work in progress so as i say it's not complete 